Murkov is keeping the regions busy at the Senyala facility, and in this video I will be explaining each of the 5 trials that are currently playable within Outlast Trials as of the 1.0 release. This will act as an updated version of our previous video when the game first went into early access. So without further ado, let's jump into the trials. The reagents are normally grouped up into a team of 4 people. You along with 3 other reagents are sent via a train system to the warehouse. During the ride you will be bound to cheers and shown a brief video on a screen from Dr. Easterman, mixed in with some subtle brainwashing images that are played throughout the facility. He will explain to you that your job during the trial is that of an exterminator, enforcing that only what they tell them is true, before explaining that there is a snitch that is inside the prison, preparing to testify against Murkov's truth. And if we want freedom, then we need to kill the snitch. As the TV screens go back to the roof, a chemical agent is released inside the carriage that causes hallucinations. Now it's important to remember that Murkov is attempting to create a type of super soldier that will do whatever they ask of them. So the idea that the reagents would be rewarded for killing a snitch that is supposedly responsible for trying to testify against Murkov is most likely viewed as a suitable starting place to condition the reagents' mind to serve Murkov and its interests. After our tripping out sessions, we arrive at the first of Easterman's trials, Snitches Get Stitches. As you'll notice, the surrounding area is filled with mannequins and television screens that create quite a scene, again, much like you would see in a movie. However, not everybody inhabiting this space is a friendly mannequin that cannot hurt you. It's also filled with bodies of previous reagents that have failed, and numerous people that will attempt to attack you, hinder your progress, or just straight up murder you. These smaller enemies are people from the earlier Lathe program, left over to use for Murkov's newer reagents, comprising largely of asylum and psych ward patients. Easterman failed to properly convert using his brainwashing program due to there being too much trauma already. Once inside, we make our way into the security room and can set our eyes on Leland Coyle for the first time. And as we learned earlier in the documents, he is not to be messed with. And he thinks that he is the commanding police officer of this place and gets a little too excited at the idea of electrocuting people with his shock baton, which is his weapon of choice. He's currently guarding the snitch, and we need to get to that snitch and begin wheeling him out to his demise. But Murkov has understandably put a lot of obstacles in our way, like turning off the power, which requires the reagents to head down into the basement to refuel and rewire the generators. Coil and numerous other ex-reagents will be scattered throughout, so the whole thing can be incredibly dangerous. You can even find numerous instances where Murkov employees are watching you as you make your way throughout the facility taking notes on your performance. Once your team has managed to refuel the generators, you'll need to make your way back upstairs to the snitch and begin pushing him along the rails, eventually being blocked by a gate. The television will show the reagents a symbol that will represent the correct body that contains a key. Those keys will open gates throughout the police station that will allow for us to continue pushing the snitch throughout. If you get the body wrong, then you'll instead pull out a device that will shock you. Something that I found interesting in the first trial was a security guard station outside the trial's confines. Mentions, if you get close enough, that the walls are not there to keep you in, but instead to keep the outside world out, further signalling the need for secrecy for this whole endeavour to work. A few gory searches later that I will unfortunately have to blur because of YouTube, we can get the gates that will allow us to get the snitch all the way through the facility, while Coyle will do everything in his power to stop you. At the end of the line is a giant electrical chamber that acts as an electrical chair. Four handles are available to use in order to create a charge that you will need to hold the handle for long enough to cause a fatal reaction on the snitch. Once you have yourself a fried snitch, you will then be able to make your way back to the shuttle while trying to avoid the people trying to kill you along the way. Once you've made it back successfully, you have officially completed the very first trial that Murkov has set out for you, eliminating a threat that was attempting to expose Murkov's interests, already planting the brainwashing seed into the mind of the reagent. Depending on your rating, Easterman will speak to you afterwards, as you're sent to the evaluation room to be cleaned, stripped of items and monitored before being released back into the sleep quarters with the other participants. Murkov gives the reagent a form of currency that can be used to purchase new things for their room and person after each trial as well. However, that is not the final task of the Snitches Get Stitches programmed. There are two MK challenges included for the reagent, the first of which is Cancel the Autopsy, which sends the reagents back to the facility that is hosting Leland Coyle. 
Easterman briefly mentions on the ride there that it doesn't matter what it is that you serve, a yearly salary, possibly an appetite, a passion or even an actual god in heaven, before asking us to show him how we serve. When we arrive we can find a few people hanging upside down above a grinder, and it is reinforced that corpses offer forensic evidence, and Murkov is asking you to turn this evidence into um, sludge. The task is simple, collect the keys in the different rooms, and much like you did in the first trial, unlock the levers that will lower the agents. Once again the corridors and rooms are filled with numerous dangers that can quite easily end a reagents' participation in a heartbeat, but once you collect the keys, do as you're told, you can once again head back for evaluation. And this is the new daily life of a Murkov reagent, forced to abide by the rules of Dr. Easterman until it becomes second nature. The third and final requirement of the Snitches Get Stitches program is to sabotage the lockdown. This tells the reagents to return power to the facility by repairing the generators and enabling their escape from prison, which in hindsight seems really counterintuitive on Murkov's part, teaching your own prisoners how to escape captivity. But I guess given Murkov's end goal was to send these reagents out to public and utilize them on missions that could get them captured, I suppose it makes sense. The rest of the trial is pretty self-explanatory, but once you're done, you return to the sleep quarters a champion of the Snitches Get Stitches trials. Does that mean freedom? No, of course not. But you might be wondering what is it that you get as a reward for completing the trial? Well, your reward is another trial. This time we head out to meet Phyllis Futterman, or better known as Mother Gooseberry in the Grind the Bad Apples program. She will be the main danger as we traverse our way through this amusement park of horror and death. We get Dr. Easterman once again speaking to us during our journey as he mentions that we the reagent are an adult, but the youth will not obey our orders and must be corrected, before saying that there are children murdering adults in the root canal and that they need to be punished. Now don't freak out, I will quickly clarify that the children being spoken about are simply hypothetical and are only mannequins and dolls, but the underlying theme in regards to the brainwashing is as serious as you could probably imagine. Once we finally arrive at the set, which is actually named Futterland, which can be found on posters and signs throughout the park, we can see what levels Murkov is willing to go to, in order to create an immersive experience for their reagents, and I think you have to salute the effort, as incredibly terrifying as it might be. We can see Mother Gooseberry parading above the door as she is dancing with a mannequin, and her quirk is the fact that she has a little duck puppet in her hand which is called Dr. Futterman, hence the name of the amusement park. And Dr. Futterman is really good at removing people's faces, and she demonstrates just that to the guests as they enter the amusement park. A little thing that you can find as you traverse the landscapes of Futterland is that numerous mannequins and people will just have skin faces that she just leaves scattered around the place. Once you manage to enter the park, you will once again be joined by various failed ex-reagents from other versions of Project Lathe, much like we did in the police department. But the amusement park is full of everything that you could imagine. Rides, games, tickets, and even a diner. Except with the gory outlast kind of fun. Our very first job is to unlock the gates to the area called the Root Canal. In order to get entry, the reagents must collect tickets by playing the carnival games. But instead of using balls, you're using human hearts. Once you complete the game, you can take your ticket to the fancy ticket collection robot, and after four tickets, you will be allowed in and our gracious host Mother Gooseberry is there once again to greet us. I'll have to blur out most of the room for, once again you guessed it, YouTube, but it's an absolute mess up there, and she is once again demonstrating just how dangerous she really is. A little ride car appears and we need to wheel it throughout the root canal ride to punish the children at the end. Again, they aren't real, just some mannequins that are treating a real person very poorly in that cart. The ride is supposed to be a kind of water ride, and you'll need to re-engage the water flow so the cart can continue to be pushed throughout the area. And speaking of area, much of the ride is dressed to look like a human mouth, with rotting teeth and such, hence the root canal name. But it also has a lot of things that you would expect in like a child's toy box, like building blocks or rubber duckies, so it's not all horrifying. Once you push the card all the way to the end, you will find yourself a giant grinder that you will need to push the mannequins into in order to punish them. 
and after doing so the reagent will be able to hit the burners flee the ride and hopefully the trial altogether once they arrive back murkov will once again clean and strip the reagent of all items and return them to the sleeping room with a big wad of murkov dollars to go buy that badass robot action figure and then send them back to do more deadly trials this time to punish the miscreants this is largely a similar premise the reagents will arrive back in Fudderland, but this time the place has had a quick coat of paint on the exterior walls that will distinguish the areas a little bit more. There is a grinder in the main room, and there are four child mannequins that are creating trouble throughout Fudderland. Your job is to find them, deactivate them, and ultimately return the mannequins into splinter form using the grinder, and they once again will have to deal with Mother Gooseberry as she is not very fond of reagents coming into her place and disrupting the children's mannequins. Also a fun little addition to this level is that when the reagents typically, if you don't want to be seen, will need to sneak around to not be noticed. However, once you have the mannequin in your hands, they have a little voice box inside them that will yell out for help and ask the failed reagents and Mother Gooseberry to murder you, revealing your location for everything around you. So this one is a little extra dangerous for the group. Once you have ground all the miscreants and you can head back into the train and go to the sleeping quarters. Some very nerve wracking arm wrestling later and you are ready to be sent back out to the third and final challenge of the grind the apples program. Open the gates. You will return to Fudderland and will need to unlock the gates preventing you from leaving. Much like the third challenge of the snitches get stitches which teaches the reagents how to escape from a captivity environment. Easterman speaks to us once again on the journey and asks us to view ourselves as a spider building a trap to ensnare the future. The underlying tone of the Grind the Bad Apples program is that of obedience. While Snitches Get Stitches taught the reagents to defend Murkov and its interests from people looking to expose them. Grind the Bad Apples teaches the reagents the importance of obedience and what can happen if you don't, or rather, what you should do if somebody isn't. It's pretty messed up overall, but I mean, you sort of have to come to expect it from this universe. Much of this challenge takes place in the background area of Fudderland which has a whole bunch of wires scattered throughout that we need to deactivate in order to open up the gates. And once you do, you'll get your grade and be ready to head back in once again. After a little nap, it's time to get back out there. And this time we'll be returning once again for our favourite child show host, Mother Gooseberry for the Cleans the Orphan program. Mother Gooseberry has been moved from Fudderland to the orphanage area for the Cleans the Orphans to take place in. You'll be placed onto the train system by Murkov employees, as Dr. Easterman once again gives us some words of advice, speaking about how even education and faith must follow mandates and reinforcing that children will learn obedience. A similar lesson was learned in the Grind the Apples program. He says to shape them young, and they'll be Murkovs for life. Very creepy if you ask me. Some words pop up on the screen explaining some of the core principles. No drugs, no rebellion, and no lust. So I guess Easterman draws the line between those and straight up murder and brainwashing. Sure. And once again, for clarity, the children mentioned are uh, just mannequins living their best life. We arrive and we get to see the set that has been created for the third program. And this time it's an orphanage. From the outside of the orphanage, it actually doesn't look that bad. But once you get inside, wow, it is a mess. And whoever decided on the interior design is to get fired because holy crap those things are some hideous paintings our first objective is to start turning off some of the security systems in order to open the gates around the orphanage more importantly the children's dormitories as they have other technical tuners to unlock the gates to the outside areas once we arrive at the dorms we can find mannequins placing their heads in piles of sugar and baking soda totally not drugs of any kind and also this thing, which I can honestly say gave me about three heart attacks as I ventured throughout this area. And speaking of heart attacks, we got Mother Gooseberry again wreaking havoc in rooms and hallways of the orphanage, which I might say is probably even more scary than the carnival, since it's now in a much smaller space and corridors instead of open areas. After doing all the tunings, the regions open up, and the gate to the classrooms will require you to go through changing the film on the projector to some classic Murkov propaganda. I have to be really selective about the footage I show throughout this, because the entire orphanage is filled with nun mannequins in very risque attire and positions, so I apologise if this part is a little chopped up. Anyway, once the propaganda has been placed in the classroom for the children to enjoy, it is now our job to head back into the reception desk and open up the gate that will lead us out to the chapel. 
and this area is where things are about to get really crazy for the reagents. And what is quite possibly the craziest thing I think I have ever done or seen in a horror game. And for YouTube's sake I will need to blur much of it, but I will explain it the best I can for you. Inside the chapel you can easily be mistaken at first for its very wholesome scene. Disco lights spinning while child mannequins dance and play between the pews. It's only when the lights turn on that we realise the true horror of this situation. And in this case, we aren't talking about God, but instead of Murkov. He is tied up at the cross, and the reagents are tasked with collecting saw handles while also turning on the generators to power the mannequins. Once we arrive, the mannequins need to, um, chop his legs off, essentially. Trust me, it's really graphic, and Outlast really turned up the gross meter for this particular program. But once that's all finished, we need to turn on the mannequins, as they will go and have a big old dance in the fake blood and eat from the, um offerings that the reagents just gave them yeah I'm, I'm not kidding now it's time to feed the orphanage and head back to the facility to be judged and placed back into the sleeping quarters for a round of arm wrestling to cope with what just happened our job however is not over we must head back for our next challenge which is to feed the children this will take us back to the orphanage but instead of being inside the main building we will make our way to the cafeteria where all of the mannequins have been placed ready for their monday night dinner but what is for dinner, you might ask? Well, let's just call it Mystery Meat Monday. We need to go around the outside areas and search for the main stock ingredient for our soup. In this case, it's bleach, which is an incredibly deadly and toxic concoction. Probably even for mannequins. Once the bottles have been collected, we can take them and fill the pot up and eventually serve the food using the graciously set out pipeline that will take the soup straight to the tables. The mannequins will jump around with excitement while the reagents jump around flailing for their life as Mother Gooseberry is coming to murder them. We get out of there and are now only left with a single challenge left for the program, foster the orphans. Which will put us back in the orphanage, but this time we need to tune all of the frequencies to allow us to save the children from Mother Gooseberry and find them a new home, or if you're like me, just hide in a cafeteria freezer for 10 minutes while the other reagents do all the work for you. This is actual footage by the way, it's not a still image. Remember folks, work smarter, not harder. Once we get the lobby gate open, it will allow the children to flee and allow us to flee back into the sleep quarters. This time around, similar to Mother Gooseberry, with the carnival and the orphanage, Murkov has now transferred Coil from the police station to his new set, the courthouse. The reagents need another lesson in justice and loyalty, and Easterman is happy to oblige, mentioning that we must always fight for and protect the people who help us, Murkov, and that our goal is to kill the judge and make them pay for crossing them. I really do have to admit, whoever is doing the set design for Murkov needs a raise, because this is some really impressive stuff. Once you reach the main lobby, you will get this feeling of Murkov justice deep down, but the reagents waste no time getting to the courtroom. Coyle makes his first appearance at the new set as he explains that the wheels of justice might turn slowly but nobody can avoid his justice. You know, normal Coyle things. The courthouse is a set of mannequins set out as lawyers, the jury and an audience to observe the trial. You might notice that the accused on the side here, while the judge is tied up and has a bag over her head up on the stand. One of the lawyer mannequins addresses the room, saying that the accused is on trial for kidnapping and cutting up four people but mentions that there is no evidence. The accused mentions her innocence and we need to continue onwards. The accused mannequin represents Murkov in this twisted situation as the reagents need to learn what it is to keep Murkov safe. I took a few minutes to sit next to the judge and listen to the different things that she says and other than the fact that she doesn't feel that she deserves what's going on she mentions that we should kill the doll and that it was only a doll. It did get me wondering if this might be the actual judge that convicted and sentenced Phyllis Futterman, aka Mother Gooseberry, since the charges that the judge was on trial for were very similar to that of Phyllis, and the reference to the doll could be alluding to her duck puppet, Dr. Futterman. Let me know if you think I'm onto something there in the comments. Anyway, the reagents will need to collect the evidence for the case, and this includes a puzzle right out of the movie 7. When you activate the box, a timer will begin, and a black light will reveal numbers hidden around the room next to a pyramid that is either filled, partially filled, or empty. The correct order for the code is by doing it in order of low to high, aka, you take the empty pyramid first, and then the one section filled in, and two section filled in, and then finally the whole section filled in. 
The evidence in question is a human head that will need to be taken outside to a fountain. Once placed inside, they will need to collect acid to act as a liquid for the fountain. Acid, heads, fountain. You can probably guess what's going to be happening here. There are numerous rooms throughout the courthouse that the reagents need to explore and to find the remaining heads of the victims of the accused and continue to place them within our acid fountain. Once the reagents have destroyed the evidence, they return to the courtroom as the defense lawyer mentioned that the case should now be thrown out for lack of evidence. Coyle shows up and says that he has taught some of his friends what to say in order to get a conviction. Now, the reagents have some witnesses to kill. You might have noticed these guys in the previous trials, but they act as the screamers. The reagents are provided with a device that causes their heads to explode, and a separate device to track them around the courthouse while Coyle chases you down. Once you've dispatched to the witnesses, we return to the courthouse and prove that without evidence and witnesses, there is no case. Now it's time to teach the judge a thing or two, which much like the chapel scene in the orphanage, is very graphic. And let's just say that the judge gets the hammers of justice. Get some bad in the legs and the arms and the head. Once the judge has been dispatched, the reagents will return to the sleeping quarters for Halloween festivities and apple juice. That is until we need to finish the following two challenges of the program. Easterman explains just how special we are. A nice little pep talk before running for our lives for the next 20 minutes. He explains that civilization is built off the suffering of the weak and we need to dispatch of the scapegoats. We need to track down each of these guys and give them the explosion treatment. The rest is very straightforward. Once they're all dead, head back to the sleep quarters and get ready for our second challenge. This time around is disposing of more evidence, which will require us to reuse our favorite disposal unit acid and this time with a bathtub type of thing there is a body inside the tub and we need to find buckets of acid to fill up the tub creating one less potential issue for our new overlord easterman once done run away from coil and back to the sleep quarters ready for the newest release trial our favorite television host mother gooseberry has received a third set for her time as the prime asset and the reagents are tasked with taking on the toy factory once you've managed to work up the courage, you re-enter the train with your fellow reagents, ready for the next adventure. Easterman calls us the Revelator. We are what exposes perversion, latent in every heart. Within the toy factory is a deviant that needs to be destroyed. Only then will we be let out. We get some more twisted hallucinations of Mother Gooseberry going to town with her drill before arriving at the facility. This time around, Dr. Futterman takes the stage. Front and center is a duck mascot can be seen around the toy factory. Appropriately named Duck, Duck and Goose. Our first job is to infiltrate the toy factory until we find a person that's trapped inside of a trash compactor. I must admit, that is not a good place to find yourself stuck in, my friend. He mentions how he's been in there for hours, or possibly days. The fact that you don't even realize would probably make me lean towards days, pal, since I would know the difference. It's not looking good for this guy, however, since we need a key that is inside the compactor, and the only way to get it open is to actually fill the compactor until it's full, causing the machine to crush the trash. And... a new friend. But we got the key, and that's what matters. We open the front door to the toy factory, and we can see the Futterman mascot in all its ducky glory. We need to reach the toy production line, which reveals a naked person on a production line belt. For obvious reasons, I'm going to have to keep this person blurred out, but we need to head up to the security room upstairs to retrieve the security key that will allow us to operate the machine. However, this will only allow us to operate it. We still need something for the assembly feeder bin, which will require finding the correct box of wax from the upstairs storage area. Next to the assembly feeder will be a television that will show you the exact box that you need. The other boxes are filled with classic Mother Gooseberry booby traps. Once we get our wax, it will need to be fed via converter belts to get around the security door systems that somehow make wax go bad. I have no idea how it does it, but sure. After that, it's simple. Feed the wax into the machine, and before you know it, our assembly line friend has himself a new coat of hot wax. Trust me, it is as terrible looking as you could probably imagine. This is, however, the first of a four-step process. Head back up and the next two keys and boxes that contain metal scrap pieces and lubricant. While doing all of this, Mother Gooseberry will remind you just why she is the creepiest damn villain in the game. Once we've fully created our toy, 
We need to open up the pressure valve since we'll be sending this new creation into the incinerator. Again, I don't really understand why we need to go through the hassle of production since we just burn them anyway, but hey, I really like the level design. After the burning is complete, we can head back to the shuttle and re-enter the trusty sleep quarters until our next challenge. The next objective is to head back into the toy factory with the intention of destroying toys of the pervasive nature, using the conveyor belts once again to get the boxes to the trash compactor. This time around, however, we can do the compacting guilt-free, since there isn't actually somebody in it this time around. But I like how this mirrors the beginning mansion mission, where you need to destroy your identity and secrets. Murkov once again urging the reagent to destroy anything that is not useful to Murkov and his interests, since it doesn't serve their objectives. Bonus points for the fact that Mother Gooseberry chased me down like a bloodhound for like 5 minutes while I was getting this done, and I think my blood pressure is still recovering as I make this darn video. The final challenge is essentially an escort mission, as you can take a full cart of toys and mannequin parts to be burned inside of an incinerator. Not much more to add on that front since it's pretty straightforward. And with that, we can head back to the sleep quarters and enjoy our new room filled with Mother Gooseberry drawings in celebration of finishing her third trial. After completing all the programs, the reagent will be left to think in the sleep quarters and will have the opportunity to be reborn, which means doing a final test and ultimately released back into the world for use by Murkov. Thank you for watching. If you got this far, rank your favorite to least favorite trial. I would love to see what you guys all thought. Also, keep an eye out for the updated Outlast Trials Explained video that I've been putting a heap of work into, as it now includes so much more lore and information. Alright guys, I'll see you all next time. Peace.